There are a lot of different things we know about the moon. There are a lot of different things we know about our Earth. And we've also discovered a lot of different effects one object has on the other. Hello, wonderful person. Today we're going to be talking about yet another really interesting discovery that tells us more about the effects our moon has on planet Earth approximately once a month for about three days or so. The effects that we kind of expected, but nobody really knew exactly what it does until the scientists were able to measure them. And here we're going to be talking about something that we can refer to as the lunar tail. The beautiful tail that's formed by various effects from the sun and that Earth passes through every single month and stays in it for about three days or so. Which also of course connects to several other studies I've discussed in some of the previous videos that should be popping up somewhere above me at some point, with one of the more interesting studies that even suggested that the flow of oxygen ions from planet Earth seemed to even encourage the creation of water on the surface of the moon, or implying that these tails are very influential on the objects as they pass through these tails once in a while. But I guess the first question is, well, how are these tails even formed? Well, as this NASA video shows, it's really through the interaction with the sun and specifically the very highly charged particles coming from the sun. They sort of wrap around the planet or around the moon and end up creating this beautiful charged tail that's visible around many different objects, including in this case Venus, or as you might have learned from the slightly younger Anton right here, from the video above, it also seems to appear around Mercury and is easily visible assuming you have the right filter. Alright, this sort of looks weird, there's like two of me and both of me are talking about similar but different things. Let's go back to the idea of tails. So all objects seem to produce them because the sun kind of makes them because of the interaction of different charged particles. Their content though depends on what's being emitted. So for example for Venus it's mostly stuff from the atmosphere. For Earth it's also mostly stuff from the atmosphere and in this case it's a lot of oxygen. But for the moon, because there is no atmosphere, something else must be happening here. And that something else is of course little particles from the surface usually disturbed by various micrometeorites and essentially what you would refer to as the exosphere. There's this famous image from NASA from the Apollo missions that shows us the lunar horizon glow and this really sort of illuminates this tiny tiny exosphere or this really thin atmosphere that exists around the moon and also exists around most other objects in the solar system. Now in this case the actual content of it is presently unknown but different molecules have already been detected over the past few decades. There seems to be a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of helium, a little bit of argon, also things like methane, nitrogen, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, but also large amounts of sodium and potassium. And it's really the sodium that we're kind of interested in. Just like in the video about mercury, it's very likely the sodium tail that seems to reach all the way to Earth and produces the most observable effects we're seeing from planet Earth. Although it's very possible that a lot of other elements are also present here as well. But where is all of the sodium coming from? Well, actually from the same location or from the same source as we find in the region in the upper atmosphere of our planet known as the sodium layer. And sodium layer is easily visible in this picture from NASA because it forms this obvious yellow orangey line that wraps all around the planet. And all of this is made of various matter coming from outer space, specifically meteorites and micrometeorites that burn up in the upper atmosphere and leave behind a lot of sodium that then starts to produce a lot of this orangey glow because of the illumination from the sun. But all of these micrometeorites and asteroids also end up on the moon. And since there is no atmosphere, they end up colliding producing a lot of different tiny collisions on the surface, dislodging a lot of different particles from the surface, which then eventually results in this. And because there's a lot of electrostatic on the surface of the moon and a lot of different electromagnetic effects that sort of make this float and circulate above the surface of the moon, it all ends up sort of hanging there until the solar radiation comes in, bombards the surface of the moon and dislodges all of these electrostatically charged particles. And so once all of this stuff starts to leave the moon, it creates the tail behind it. And the tail itself is really large. And obviously, once in a while, Earth passes through it. But it seems that for the most part, all of these particles from this tail end up sort of circulating around the planet, with some also ending up in the sodium layer of planet Earth. But the vast majority of the particles simply leave the planet on the other side, 
escaping into the interplanetary space. Which also means that all of these particles coming from the moon are definitely harmless and generally have almost no effect on our planet at all. However, every month for a few days, the glow does become visible to some really highly powered telescopes that usually start reporting very faint orange glow in the skies, which also seems to occasionally increase in power. Although for the most part, it sort of looks like this. This is almost exactly what the scientists usually see. It's this really fuzzy spot, usually on the other side from the sun, and is normally about 5 times larger than the moon is in the night skies, but about 50 times dimmer than the light that the human eye can perceive. So you do need to have a special telescope to be able to detect this. And because its brightness seems to fluctuate from time to time, the scientists really wanted to find out what's really going on here. How come the brightness changes? Is it because of the solar cycles? Is it because of the differences in orbit as the moon orbits around the Earth? Or does it have something to do with the Earth's atmosphere? And so the scientists whose paper you can find in the description analyzed approximately 21,000 photos from about 13 years of different observations in order to discover any possible patterns and any possible explanations to why this particular sodium tail varied from time to time. So for example, one of the obvious discoveries was that the spot was a little bit brighter when the moon was a little bit closer to planet Earth. That kind of makes sense. You know, it's coming from the moon, so obviously the closer the moon is, the more effects we'll see. It also seems to peak and be the brightest when the moon is what's known as the new moon. And so about 5 hours after the new moon, that's when the sodium tail seems to be at the brightest possible. And that's of course because of the orbital locations here, with the sun being almost exactly behind the moon and blasting it with a lot of energy that's creating all these particles headed toward planet Earth. But surprisingly, there was absolutely no correlation with the solar activity, including the solar cycle. No matter how active or inactive the sun was, the power of the tail and the brightness of the tail didn't change almost at all. And so the tail seems to be a natural formation independent of how much energy the sun is emitting toward us. There was also no correlation with any other solar effects such as, for example, electron pressure, helium pressure, density or speed of plasma in the interplanetary space. And so for the most part, the effect was always there and was always more or less permanent. But it did have one interesting pattern that was somewhat related to what was happening on the surface of the moon. It seems that there is a kind of a pattern every four years, a pattern that's related to various collisions happening on the surface of the moon. Okay, so this particular simulation is actually a little bit exaggerated. Here we're talking about micrometeorites. But every four years, the moon and planet Earth experience an increase in micrometeorite collisions. This is a more or less sporadic event that happens as both Earth and Moon orbit around the solar system, and it's not really related to any specific meteor shower or asteroid shower or any other specific event, but these random encounters and these sporadic events do seem to contribute the most to the overall brightness of this sodium tail, with the most reasonable explanation being that, well, unlike a typical meteor shower, an occasional collision with a slightly larger meteorite is more likely to release a lot more material into the exosphere and thus create a much brighter tail as a result. And if a large enough collision occurs and a large enough asteroid ends up colliding with the moon, it might even produce such a tremendously powerful tail that is going to be easily visible with a naked eye looking into the night skies. Now it's not something that has happened just yet and it's not something that we expect to happen anytime soon. But based on the idea of the exosphere on the moon and how we believe it's formed, a large enough strike on the moon will definitely be enough to produce observable effects that are going to be easily visible as a really bright sodium tail emanating through the night skies, approximately five times larger than the full moon. And this type of glow might have happened in the past and might have even surprised certain early astronomers, but they probably had absolutely no idea what they were looking at. But if it happens in the future, we'll know exactly how to analyze it and what to look for. So in some sense, I secretly hope something does collide with the moon sometime soon. But anyway, on that note, it's definitely a very interesting discovery. It's still not entirely clear if this has any other effect on the planet Earth other than just the visual effects, but chances are we might discover more about this in the next few years. Until then though, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and also check out the videos from the wonderful Dr. James Donahue, 
whose video I've been using as a simulation here and who's been making these incredibly awesome animations related to astronomy for many years now. Also, maybe support the channel Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.